بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد علی ہاشمی فرام یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن ایٹ اے کیمپس اینڈ ود یو ریکارڈنگ ٹیچنگ آف انٹروڈکشن ٹو بایو کیمسٹری سبجیکٹ ان دس لیکچر وی گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی اباؤٹ کیمسٹری اینڈ بایولوجیکل امپورٹنس آف ممبرین لپڈس ان دا پریویس لیکچر وی اسٹڈیڈ اباؤٹ دی Uh, chemistry and importance of the storage lipids and the current one will discuss the membrane lipids the main concepts we are going to learn in this lecture are the importance um, and chemistry of the following membrane lipids um, these membrane lipids will include uh, phospholipids sphingolipids, glycolipids, sterols and prostaglandins. We are going to discuss each one of these in, in detail in the coming s- slides. So the central architectural feature of biological membranes is a double layer of lipids. which acts as a barrier to the passage of polar molecules and ions. Uh, what does that mean that uh, the central architectural feature, it means the, the basic structural feature, mean how the biological membranes are made, that is their architecture, their structure. So they uh, are present in the membranes, uh, the lipids these are present in the membrane as a double layer which is also called as lipid bilayer as you might have studied in the earlier classes of biology so that double layer of lipids acts as a barrier to the passage of molecules and ions so that uh, double layer is there to protect the cell from uh, everything which enters the cell so it allows certain things to enter the cell and it stops some things which are not required or which may be dangerous to the cell we are going to study in detail the um, function and structure of these lipid bilayers uh, in the next lectures membrane lipids are amphipathic that uh, what does that mean it means that they have both uh, both functionalities the uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic functions so they ha- their one end is hydrophobic and the other end is hydrophilic so what is hydrophobic mean hydrophobic means water repelling and hydrophilic means water attracting So as you'll see in their structure, they have uh, non-polar and polar parts. The non-polar parts will be hydrophobic and the polar parts will be hydrophilic. So they have uh, a dual nature. There are hydrophobic interactions with each other and their hydrophilic interactions with water direct their packing into sheets called membrane bilayers as we just uh, discussed that uh, uh, due to their hydrophobic interactions with each other uh, they they form a bilayer and that bilayer its heads are hydrophilic so they face the water side and their tails are hydrophobic so they are together which Uh, makes a lipid bilayer in the membrane we're going to see it in the next lectures in detail so in this uh, in this one we are going to discuss the three general types of membrane lipids the first one is glycerophospholipids sphingolipids and sterols what are glycerophospholipids Um, these are the lipids in which the hydrophobic regions are composed of two fatty acids joined to glycerol. Uh, we have seen the glycerol molecule in the previous lecture. Uh, it has a three carbon chain with three hydroxyl groups. So that is the backbone of glycerophospholipids. Um, 
where two fatty acids are joined to the two carbons of it. In sphingolipids, uh, a single fatty acid is, is joined to a fatty amine called uh, sphingosine. We're going to see the structure in detail in the next slides. And the sterols. What are sterols? These are compounds characterized by a rigid system of four fused hydrocarbon rings. A sterol is a bit more complex than the open chain uh, lipids. So it has four fused hydrocarbon rings. Four rings are fused together. They are attached together. Um, as we shall see uh, in the in the last of this lecture, where we are going to study the sterols. So the hydrophilic moieties in these amphipathic compounds may be as simple as a single hydroxyl group, um, like at the end of a sterol ring system, or they may be much more complex, as you'll see in the these glycerophospholipids and sphingolipids. In glycerophospholipids and some sphingolipids, a polar head group is joined to the hydrophobic moiety by a phosphodiester linkage. These are the phospholipids. Kuch jo glycerophospholipids hain aur kuch sphingolipids hain, unme kya hota hai ke jo polar group hota hai, polar head group hota hai, वो हाइड्रोफोबिक मॉइटी के साथ एक फास्फोर डाइएस्टर लिंकेज के जरिए जॉइन होता है दरमियान में एक फास्फेट बॉन्ड होता है वो भी नेक्स्ट स्लाइड पे हम देखते हैं उनको फास्फोलिपिड्स कहते हैं ऑन द अदर हैंड सच सम स्फिंगोलिपिड्स दे लैक फास्फेट ग्रुप बट दे हैव अ सिंपल शुगर और कॉम्प्लेक्स ओलिगोसेकेराइड एट देयर पोलर एंड्स दीस आर ग्लाइकोलिपिड्स तो दूसरी टाइप जो है वो ग्लाइकोलिपिड्स है जिनमें फास्फेट ग्रुप नहीं होता उसकी जगह पे कोई शुगर मॉलिक्यूल होता है उनके जो पोलर एंड होते हैं उन पे उनको ग्लाइकोलिपिड्स कहते हैं सो हियर वी कैन सी दैट मेम्ब्रेन लिपिड्स इफ यू डिवाइड देम इन फास्फोलिपिड्स एंड ग्लाइकोलिपिड्स एज वी जस्ट डिस्कस इन द प्रीवियस स्लाइड फास्फोलिपिड्स Uh, may be of two types uh, that is glycerophospholipids and sphingolipids so glycerophospholipids have simple glycerol backbone with two fatty acid chains and then on the third uh, carbon a phosphate group is attached which is further attached to an alcohol so they these are these will be called as glycerophospholipids the other type other subtype of phospholipids is sphingolipids sphingolipids what what is difference between sphingolipids and glycerophospholipids in glycerophospholipids the backbone is the glycerol molecule while in sphingolipids the main backbone is sphingosine it is not glycerol so head group is sphingosine and then it has one fatty acid chain and then a phosphate group and then um, another Uh, moiety which may be choline ethanolamine or or something else so these these will be phospholipids then we come to glycolipids glycolipids as the name implies there should be some sugar molecule in them or a carbohydrate so they also have two further subtypes sphingolipids and galactolipids sphingolipids have a sphingosine uh, backbone and then uh, one fatty acid and a mono or oligosaccharide so what is difference between the sphingolipids and un, which come under phospholipid and the sphingolipid which come under glycolipid the ones which are with phospholipid they have a phosphate group and the ones which are in glycolipids they lack that phosphate group did you get the point so these ones they contain a mono or oligosaccharide they have a sugar molecule so uh, that's why they are uh, under the umbrella of glycolipids the second one is galactolipids galactolipids uh, or they are also called sulfolipids 
they have a glycerol backbone with two fatty acids uh, similar to these glycerophospholipids and then the third um, carbon has a, a sugar moiety mono or disaccharide uh, with a sulfate group at the end due to which they might be called as sulfolipids. So the, this one is uh, out of scope. We are not discussing the bacterial lipids at the moment. So we first st discuss about the phospholipids. Phospholipids are a class of lipids that are major component of all cell membranes. So the membrane lipids, uh, as we started the chapter with the name membrane lipids, uh, phospholipids, they are uh, the major class which is present in all biological membranes or the cell membranes. So the structure of phospholipid molecule generally consists of two hydrophobic fatty acid tails and a hydrophilic head consisting of a phosphate group. So as we previously discussed that uh, lipids have two ends, a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic end. Phospholipids, they have a hydrophobic fatty acid tails so you know that the fatty acids, they are hydrophobic due to those uh, long carbon chains. And uh, they, they are forming the tails of the phospholipids. And what is the head? The head group is hydrophilic because it consists of a phosphate group, which is a polar group. So that is why uh, it is uh, hydrophilic. Phospholipids might be glycerophospholipids or sphingolipids with a phosphate group as we just discussed here sphingolipids or phos uh, glycerophospholipids they are mo both types of the phospholipids so now we move to the glycerophospholipids glycerophospholipids are basically membrane lipids in which two fatty acids are attached in ester linkage to the first and second carbons of glycerol and a highly polar or charged group is attached through a phosphodiester linkage to the third carbon. So, um, in glycerophospholipids, this, this is the molecule of uh, glycerol. If we uh, remove that PO3 and put a H here, that will be glycerol. So, in glycerophospholipids, these first two carbon, carbon number one and carbon number two, they have two uh, fatty acids attached over here through the ester linkages uh, by removing these hydroxyl and these hydrogens of the hydroxyl group and the third carbon has a, a highly polar group which is attached to a phosphodiester linkage so uh, this phosphate group is attached here and then these oxygens are available for any other highly polar group to attach to the uh, this phosphate group which is directly attached to the uh, this glycerol molecule. So glycerol is a prochiral molecule. The, what does that mean? That it, ha it has no chiral carbon, but just after the addition of the phosphate group at one end, it becomes chiral. So prochiral molecules are those molecules which after ch any change on one carbon, they become chiral. And uh, I hope that all of you know what is a chiral carbon. A chiral carbon is the one which has four different groups attached to it. So if you look at this carbon, carbon number two, it, it has four different groups. So one group is this CH2OH. Second group is the hydrogen. Third group is the hydroxyl. And fourth group is this whole moiety. So it has four different groups. That is why it is it will be called as a chiral carbon. So uh, this this compound can be named as L-glycerol three phosphate or D-glycerol one phosphate. If we start numbering from this carbon, it will be D-glycerol one phosphate. If we number it from the here, it will be um, L-glycerol three phosphate. So, uh, what is the chemistry of these glycerophospholipids? Glycerophospholipids are named as derivatives of the parent compound, uh, phosphatidic acid. 
we will we shall see this phosphatidic acid very soon on the next slide um that is according to the polar alcohol in the head group we'll see which alcohols are uh, attached on the head group on the next slide phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylethanolamine have um these are two phosphoglycerophospholipids which have uh, choline and ethylolamine in their polar head groups for example and they are named according to uh, those uh, alcohols which are in their head group in all these compounds the head group is joined to glycerol through a phosphodiester bond in which the phosphate group bears a negative charge at neutral ph um we we have just seen in the previous slide look here that the phosphate group has a negative charge the polar alcohol may be negatively charged neutral or positively charged so the alcohol which will be in the head group that that might have um any charge or it might be neutral so here is the phosphatidic acid general structure in which you can see that uh, uh, there are two fatty acid moieties uh, on the glycerol and then we have a phosphate group here with an x showing here so the x might be any of these different molecules and uh, depending on that its name will be here so this table presents you uh, different glycerophospholipids for example if we replace h with uh, hydrogen very simple that will be phosphatidic acid so that structure is of phosphatidic acid and uh, if we uh, replace this x with the uh, ethanol amine as we studied on the previous slide it will be called phosphatidyl ethanol amine and if there is choline moiety instead of x so this will be called as phosphatidyl choline similarly serine glycerol and um, you know acetyl 4,5 biphosphate and phosphatidyl glycerol these can be uh, present in place of the x and the name of glycerophospholipid will be um, here so the fatty acid in uh, glycerophospholipids can be of any of a wide variety for a, so a given phospholipid like phosphatidylcholine may consist of a number of molecular species with its unique complement of fatty acids so these Uh, the structure of this x will be uh, as given in this table but these fatty acid can vary from um, organism to organism and uh, the location of these glycerophospholipids so these uh, two fatty acid chain they can be different in different organisms the distribution of molecular species is specific for different organisms different tissues of the same organism and different glycerophospholipids in the same cell or tissue so uh, that is what we just discussed that the distribution of these molecular species uh, that is specific for different organism each organism might have its own fatty acids even different tissues of the same organism and different glycerophospholipids in the same cell may they may have different um, fatty acid chains In general, glycerophospholipids contain a C16 or C18 saturated fatty acid at carbon number 1 and C18 to C20 unsaturated fatty acid at carbon number 2. That is a generality, but uh, it's not specific. It might be different for uh, different uh, uh, places where the glycerophospholipid is found. so um some phospholipids have ether linked fatty acid instead of the ester linkages what are those uh, let's have a look some animal tissues and some unicellular organisms are rich in ether lipids in which one of the two acyl chains is attached to glycerol in ether rather than ester linkage so we have seen previously um, let's have a look here that this is a uh, ester linkage this is also an ester linkage if one of these is replaced by an ether linkage they will be um the phospholipids having ether linked fatty acids so the ether linked chain may be saturated 
as in the alkyl ether lipids or that may contain a double bond between carbon number one and two as in plasmalogens um, we'll, we'll see on the next slide and where are these ether linked uh, lipids are found their vertebrate heart tissue is uniquely enriched in ether lipids about half of the heart phospholipids are uh, plasmalogens so here is a the structure of a plasmalogen um, which has uh, an ether linkage here and then a double bond here as well which um, we discussed on the previous slide and uh, on the carbon number three, it has a phospho, uh, phosphate moiety with a choline uh, polar group. The membranes of halophilic bacteria, ciliated protists, and certain invertebrates also contain high proportions of ether lipids. So, ether lipids, ye or kaha paaye jate hain? Ye halophilic bacteria mein paaye jate hain. Ciliated protists mein some protozoans uh, which have cilia on them. Uh, they are called ciliated protists and uh, kuch invertebrates may be pai jate hain uh, ether lipids so the next one is sphingolipids sphingolipids is the fourth large class of membrane lipids and it has a polar head group and two non polar tails but unlike glycerophospholipids and galactolipids, uh, sphingolipids contain no glycerol. So there is no glycerol present in sphingolipids. Their structure, their head structure looks quite similar to the uh, glycerophospholipids, but they have no glycerol in them. Sphingolipids, they are composed of one molecule of the long chain amino alcohol that called sphingosine. Um, uh, so they have the backbone of sphingosine, not uh, glycerol, uh, or there might be one of its derivatives. Uh, then uh, uh, after sphingosine, they have one molecule of a long chain fatty acid and a polar head group. So these are three main components, sphingosine or its derivative, a long chain fatty acid and a polar head group which is joined by a glycosidic linkage in some cases and uh, by a phosphodiester linkage in others. Uh, let's have a look on the next slide. So, uh, yep, here is the sphingosine moiety uh, colored in this uh, magenta background. And then we have a polar head group, which is uh, this one, the fatty acid, and uh, an X group, which can be in... Uh, uh, a phosphodiester linkage or a glycosidic um, linkage. So, if X is hydrogen, it will be termed as ceramide. We're, we're going to discuss about ceramide uh, on the next slide. So, uh, then if we have sphingomyelin, which has um, the same structure, and instead of X, there will be uh, phosphocholine this whole moiety will be present here. It will be called as sphingomyelin. And uh, that, that one has a phosphodiester linkage as we um, studied here. And what about the glycosidic linkage? If there is glucose present here, it will be glycosidic linkage. And uh, the structure of it will be uh, glucosyl cerebroside. And similarly, uh, we might have these different uh, complex sugars uh, at the place of X. So, uh, carbons 1, 2, and 3 of the sphingosine molecule, they look structurally analogous to the three carbons of glycerol in the glycerophospholipid. So, if you look at these carbons, they look quite similar to the uh, glycerophospholipids uh, glycerol moiety. When a fatty acid is attached in amide linkage to the NH2 on C2, uh, the resulting compound is a ceramide. So, in this NH2, uh, if one hydrogen is removed and a fatty acid is attached um, to this amide linkage, that compound will be called as ceramide. And uh, it, it looks quite similar to the diacylglycerol. 
And ceramide is the structural parent of all the sphingolipids. As you might have seen on the previous slide, uh, let's have a look again, that it is the structural parent of all uh, the other sphingolipids. So if we put an hydrogen, a hydrogen here, it will be ceramide. But just re by replacing that hydrogen with different other groups, we, uh, we can find that ceramide backbone is present there. And just by replacing a hydrogen, uh, other sphingolipids are obtained. So that's why we call that ceramide is the uh, structural parent of all sphingolipids. So there are three subclasses of sphingolipids, uh, which are derivatives of ceramide, but they differ in their head groups. So the first one is sphingomyelins, then neutral uh, glycolipids. The third one is gangliosides. So first, sphingomyelins. Sphingomyelins are classified in phospholipids because they contain phosphocholine or phosphoethanolamine as their polar head groups. So here is the phosphocholine. Uh, there might be phosphoethanolamine. Uh, so this is the phosphoethanolamine, sorry. Um, there might be phosphocholine in in place of uh, this phosphoethanolamine. And uh, this is in the polar head group. And this is the long tail. Sphingomyelins, they are present in the plasma membrane of animal cells and are especially prominent in myelin. What is myelin? That is a membranous sheath that surrounds and insulates the exons of some neurons. So you know that neurons are the cells which are responsible for the communication uh, between the cells in the body and uh, it takes the nerve impulses from the brain to the whole body. So uh, the uh, sphingomyelins are present in those uh, neurons as well. That is why their name is sphingomyelins because uh, they are in the myelin, uh, which is a sheet that protects the exons of neurons. So uh, here is the structure of uh, sphingomyelin. If you look at its structure uh, in detail, uh, that's how it will look in the in the three dimensions, and. Uh, it's not as simple as it, it looks here. Uh, ke ke chemistry um, can represent chemical compounds in two dimensions like this, but they, they are actually um, in three dimensions. They don't sit like that compound in the on the previous slide. So these two fatty acid chains will be uh, protruding out like this, and this will be uh, the polar head group. So now you understand why we call this a polar head group and these ones as non-polar tails. You can see that these all, the, the black color represents the carbon here. So uh, these two are looking like tails and they are hydrophobic. And this is the head and it has um, polar groups present. So it will be hydrophilic. So that is the structure of a sphingomyelin. What is the biological significance of sphingomyelins? Uh, the membranous myelin sheath that surrounds and uh, insulates many nerve cell exons that is particularly rich in sphingomyelin, uh, suggesting it role, its role as an insulator of nerve fiber. So that is its first biological importance, that uh, it works as an insulator in the nerve fibers. And it has been discovered that sphingomyelin plays a significant role uh, in cell signaling pathways. So when cells send signals to each other in those pathways, uh, sphingomyelins have uh, an important role. The second uh, types of uh, these lipids is glycolipids. And uh, neutral glycolipids, they can be divided into cerebrocytes globocytes. First one is cerebrocytes. Cerebrocytes have a single sugar link to cer ceramide. Um, we'll have a look on the next slide. That uh, their parent structure is basically ceramide, but they have a single sugar uh, linked to the uh, phosphate group. And those with the galactose are characteristically found in the plasma membranes of cells in neural tissue. Uh, so if that sugar is galactose, those 
cerebrocytes are found in the uh, neural tissues, uh, plasma membranes, and if the sugar is glucose, and then these these ones are found in the non-neural tissues. And what are globocytes? They are neutral glyco sphingolipids with two or more sugars, usually D-glucose, D-galactose, or um, N-acetyl, D-galactose amine. So globocytes have more than one sugar, and cerebrocytes have just one sugar attached to them. Have a look here. Um, in This is the, the same table where we uh, left these two for discussion. So these are two sugars. If uh, there is only one sugar, it will be a cerebrocyte. And if there are two or more sugar, it will be, uh, if there are two sugars, it will be a globocyte. So um, if it is, one sugar is glucose and the other one is galactose, uh, which are present on, instead of this X, that will be lactosyl ceramide. So these are the uh, basic structure of um, some cerebrocytes and globocytes. Next, we move on to the third type of ceramides, that is gangliosides. Gangliosides are the most complex sphingolipids, um, as you shall see uh, very soon on the next slides, that their structures are very complex. They have oligosaccharides as their polar head groups, and one or more residues of N-acetyl neuraminic acid, which is represented by the, this symbol, uh, and it is often simply called as sialic acid and uh, they are present at the termini let's have a look at the previous slide so these different moieties they they are not as simple as they're looking we'll see their structure uh, on the next slides they are present here in case of gangliosides and sialic acids uh, that gives gangliosides the negative charge at ph7 and which distinguishes them from globocytes. So this is the structure of a sialic acid which has a negative charge uh, which is uh, uh, present at the neutral pH and that is why they are distinguishable from the uh, globocytes. What is the biological significance of sphingolipids um, overall? In humans at least 60 different sphingolipids have been identified in cellular membranes. So uh, you can see that how many different types of them are uh, only present in human beings, let alone the other organisms. And many of these are especially prominent in the plasma membranes of neurons, as we just studied about uh, sphingomyelins. Um, some are clearly recognition sites on the cell surface, but a specific function for only a few sphingolipids has been discovered thus far. So there are so many of them, but um, there is uh, still room to study about them in detail. So we, we only know a few sphingolipids whose specific functions are discovered. The carbohydrate moieties of certain sphingolipids define the human blood groups and therefore determine the type of blood that individual can safely receive in blood transfusions. So the, the carbohydrate moieties as we have seen on the previous slides like glucose, galactose and other moieties, they are actually specific which um, are related to the human blood groups. That is not the scope of this lecture but just as a as a biological significance you can see that uh, human blood um, groups they are identified based on these sphingolipids so let's have a look briefly on the human blood groups the o a and b uh, these groups are determined in part so that is one part of the determination of the blood groups um, by the these uh, oligosaccharide head groups, the ones shown in the blue color uh, in these glycosphingolipids. So if uh, O antigen is present, the structure of these uh, oligosaccharide is this, glucose, 
and then a galactose and then an acetyl neuraminic acid then a galactose and a fructose um, moiety so this uh, whole uh, oligosaccharide is present in case of the o antigen and in case of a antigen um, we have an extra an acetyl neuraminic acid here and in case of b antigen the difference is this uh, whole moiety is same but we have a uh, galactose at the end instead of um, neuraminic acid so these are three different antigens which are present in in case of different blood groups so gangliosides are concentrated in other su outer surface of cells where they present points of recognition for extracellular molecules or surfaces of neighboring cells so they are present in the uh, outer surface of the cells and uh, they recognize different molecules which need to enter the cell or they even recognize the neighboring cells the kinds and amounts of gangliosides in the plasma membrane change dramatically during embryonic development so when an embryo grows into an individual slowly the amounts and uh, different kinds of gangliosides in the membranes of the organism they change very dramatically and rapidly investigation uh, of the biological roles of diverse gangliosides remains fertile grounds of, for uh, future research so uh, these biological roles are not very well understood and uh, they present a very fertile ground for future research uh, if some people are um, interested in going to the biochemistry, they might find this field for uh, their future research, which has um, still uh, available space to be discovered. Now we move to the degradation of uh, phospholipids and sphingolipids. Uh, degradation means breakdown. Most cells uh, continually degrade and replace their membrane lipids. For each hydrolyzable bond in a glycerophospholipid, there is a specific hydrolytic enzyme in the lysosome. So, um, to, to break each hydrolyzable bond, uh, we have a specific uh, enzyme in the lysosomes of the cell. So, lysosome is a, an organelle of the cell which has enzymes, hydrolytic enzymes, mean uh, to break these hydrolyzable bonds. Uh, and uh, each bond has its specific enzyme. Phospholipases of the A type, the ph what are phospholipases? They are the enzymes. Um, they remove one of the two fatty acids producing a lysophospholipid. And then lysophospholipases are another enzymes uh, they remove the remaining fatty acid. Have a look here. Uh, phospholipase A1, it will hydrolyze this bond and break down this uh, fatty acid chain from here. And then another type of phospholipase, that is A2, that will hydrolyze this bond. And uh, phospholipase C will hydrolyze this uh, phosphate bond. And phospholipase D is responsible to detach this sugar moiety so every enzyme has a specific structure and it performs its own function um, only so next we move on to sterols sterols are structural lipids uh, present in the membranes of most eukaryotic cells uh, the characteristic structure of this fifth group of membrane lipids is the steroid nucleus consisting of four fused rings, three with six carbons and one with five carbon. We'll have a look at it on the next slide. The steroid nucleus is almost planar and is relatively rigid. The fused rings do not allow rotation about carbon-carbon bonds. So if you look at this structure, three rings are six-membered rings and one ring is the uh, five member ring and due because they are fused here look at these these are the fused walls um, that fusion uh, makes it quite rigid and does not allow rotation about these carbon carbon bonds 
so it has uh, more or less uh, quite planar structure it uh, it cannot rotate and make different other shapes and the chemical structure the rings are labeled a through d you can see a b c d um, to simplify reference to the derivatives of the steroid nucleus and the carbon atoms are numbered in blue color so these blue color you can see that uh, these all carbon atoms are numbered uh, from 1 to 27 the carbon 3 hydroxyl group um, is the polar head group that has uh, a hydroxyl group here for storage and transport of the sterol this hydroxyl group condenses with a fatty acid to form a sterol ester so that is the only polar part in the cholesterol this is the cholesterol molecule and um, we are studying the sterols here have a look at uh, cholesterol in three dimensions so that is the structure uh, which you can see on the right side uh, uh, in motion and uh, this is the fatty acid chain and, and uh, here is the uh, polar moiety so this end is polar end and all the rest is the hydrophobic end cholesterol uh, the major sterol in the animal tissues uh, that is amphipathic as we just studied uh, it has a polar head group the hydroxyl group and a non-polar uh, body and uh, similar steroles are found in other eukaryotes like stigma sterol in plants and ergosterol in fungi for example uh, so in fungi and uh, uh, plants cholesterol is not present but uh, it has its similar siblings like stigma sterol and agosterol bacteria cannot synthesize sterols uh, however a few bacterial species can incorporate exogenous sterols into their membranes like some bacteria they can take up the exterior sterols um, and take up into their bodies but they cannot synthesize it by themselves what is the biological significance of sterols uh, in addition to their role as a membrane constituents the sterols serve as precursors for a wide variety of products with specific biological activities so they are precursors for uh, preparation of a, a wide variety of products steroid hormones for example are potent biological signals that regulate the gene expression steroid hormones are very important in the body uh, similarly bile acids they are polar derivatives of cholesterol that act as detergents in the intestine emulsifying dietary fats to make them more readily accessible to digestive lipases so uh, bile acids are the uh, the acids which are actually derivatives of cholesterol they emulsify the uh, fats in the food that we eat so that uh, those fats are more readily accessible to the digestive enzymes which are called lipases next and the last one is the prostaglandins prostaglandins they contain a five carbon ring originating from the chain of arachidonic acid we'll have a look at the structure of this arachidonic acid um, their names derive from the prostate gland why are they called prostaglandin because they derive from the prostate gland which is the tissue from uh, which the uh, these were first isolated by uh, bent simelson and soon bergstrom two groups of prostaglandins are originally they were defined uh, pge for the ether soluble prostaglandin and pgf for uh, f is for phosphate in swedish which are uh, buffer soluble each group contains numerous subtypes named pge1 pge2 and uh, so forth so here is the structure of arachidonic acid um, as we just discussed on the previous slide that is the their basic structure and here uh, fusion occurs at this position to make a five membered ring then prostaglandin is formed from this arachidonic acid so um, I, I think this is uh, pretty understandable that a fusion at this position makes a ring here the rest of the structure is uh, similar to the arachidonic acid 
So that forms a prostaglandin. Prostaglandins act in many tissues by regulating uh, the senses of the intracellular messenger, uh, three prime, five prime cyclic AMP. So this is an intracellular messenger which takes messages between cells. Um, so its synthesis is regulated by prostaglandins. And because CMP mediates the action of diverse hormones, the prostaglandins affect a wide range of cellular and tissue functions. That is uh, self-explanatory. Some prostaglandins stimulate contraction of the smooth muscle of the uterus during uh, menstruation and labor. So prostaglandins have uh, importance in the body. Some prostaglandins also affect blood flow to specific organs, uh, the wake sleep cycle, and the responsiveness of certain tissues to hormones such as epinephrine and glucagon. So some prostaglandins also elevate body temperature when uh, we have fever and uh, uh, they cause inflammation and pain. They are also involved in these things. Here is some interesting reading for you. Uh, I'll leave it for you to read and uh, uh, understand that how biochemistry, uh, how biochemistry uh, acts in medicine and uh, what is its importance in practical life. Uh, just have a read it, uh, read through it, and if you have any questions, you can uh, post in the comment section, or we can discuss them in the meeting. And uh, it's not a special assignment for you. Actually, you have you should go to this link and see different three-dimensional structures of lipids to have a greater understanding um, of how their structures actually look like in three dimensions. So that was the end of the lecture. And uh, if you have any questions related to this, you can ask in the comment section. Uh, and uh, we can e even discuss them in the in the Google Meet when we have the meeting time of our class. So thank you very much for your attention, and inshallah we'll meet in the next lecture. Until then, Allah Hafiz.